quite a strange map. Not only do we have towns and roads and rivers, but we also have lots and lots of squiggly lines, which tend to make it rather confusing. What are those lines? Well, I'm glad you asked. They happen to be contour lines, and the map is called a contour map. And those lines are vitally important because they tell us a lot about the mountains and valleys in that region. What are contour lines? Well, have a look at this mountain. It happens to be made of plasticine. Imagine that it's over 300 metres in height and a giant knife comes swinging across the, uh, the landscape and takes off the top of the mountain, right? That's the first contour, the shape of that little piece. We'll put it down there. And then another giant knife comes across at 200 metres and slices through the mountain. That's your second contour. You can see it's quite different in shape from the first one. And then at 100 metres above sea level, we have another contour. And then one slices the mountain right across at sea level and we have yet another contour. So as we go down the mountain, the strange shapes change and they get larger. And that's the information that a contour map gives us. Let's have a look at this simple contour map and see if we can understand what it means. If this represents uh, a hilly region, even if you've never been there before in your life, you should be able to work out what it looks like. How? Well, you start looking at the contours and looking at the figures. That says 1,000 metres, so that suggests that the mountain is at least 1,000 metres in height. Down here, 600, 500, 400, 300. The mountain's going down into a valley. 400, starting to go up again. So that's the valley. This is the mountain. So you can start to picture in your mind what it looks like. Not only that, if you want to, you can build a model of that very region. How do you do that? Well, you'd have to start by tracing every contour on the map. Take a piece of thin paper and uh, a thick black pen and trace over the contour like that. And then transfer that to a sheet of corrugated cardboard, either by pressing through with a pen uh, or just cutting around both together. And you'll end up with lots of slices of cardboard. Here they are here. That one you can see represents that contour on the bottom. This one represents the base of that mountain and all the other bits and pieces going up the mountain to the top. Well, I've done that and I've got all these separate bits and pieces. If you're going to make a model, you need to stick them together. Happen to have done that as well. Look at this. There it is. All the bits and pieces stuck together with glue. So they stay there even if I hold it upside down. Trouble is, it doesn't look very much like a, a real landscape, does it? Because everything is in steps. Real landscapes tend to be fairly smooth. How do we make it smooth? Well, get a box of paper tissues and some very thin glue. Mix up about half glue and half water. That should be about right. And then dip your paper tissue in there, get it rather sloppy, then rinse it out, and then spread it out and place it over the mountain. And you're starting to smooth it out. Now, at this point, you'll suddenly realise what those lines meant. You'll notice that where they were close together, as they were here, and as they were in that position on the map, it means that the slope of the mountain is steep. Where they're further apart, as they are out here, it means that the slope is going to be more gentle. And that'll become more and more obvious as you build up the map. Those sloppy pieces of paper tissue fill in the gaps and give you a smooth surface on your mountains and also your valleys. And then, when you finally get it all together, after it's dried for several hours, you can then paint it. Now, to paint it, you can use spray paints if you want to, or watercolours, and you can paint on not only the, uh, the rivers and the bushes and the rocky parts and the cliffs as well, but you can also paint in houses, if you like, and trees. And you'll end up with a model that looks very much like this, a three-dimensional model uh, of the original landscape made from a contour map. I'm